Hi, everyone. Um, really glad to be here at NOAA and to kick off the FinTech uh, section of, of NOAA. I'm Stefan Klestil. I'm general partner with Speedinvest, the pan-European early stage uh, venture firm. I'm responsible for FinTech uh, at Speedinvest. I'm astonished that in healthcare you can create 55 million turnover based on 1 million investment. I have not seen a fintech, insurtech yet doing that, to be honest, so very impressed. Um, so we're going to see a lot of cool companies in the next few hours from the fintech, insurtech space. Uh, uh, in the lending sector, we have Smava uh, loan books. We have Mambo Solaris from the infrastructure side. We've got Fintonic from Spain uh, in the personal finance. Uh, area and then two category leaders in investments, um, Nutmeg and Money Farm. So stick around, it's going to be really exciting. And of course, later in the afternoon on main stage, we'll have a few real fintech superstars, um, such as uh, Marcus Brown from Wirecard, Max from N26, uh, Nikolai from Revolut, and also Daniel from Lemonade announcing their entry into the European and German markets. Um, next page, uh, let's see, there we go. Yeah, a little bit of uh, PR, of course, for Speedinvest. Um, as I said, we are a pan-European VC. We have offices here in Berlin, in Vienna, in London, in Munich, and also San Francisco, very soon in Paris. We do early stage FinTech with over 100 uh, investments across Europe, and uh, we've been ranked multiple times as most active. Uh, the job of me and my team is to make it the most successful uh, fintech around. Um, we've been backing uh, incredible founders uh, across Europe. This is obviously a pretty wild mix of very early and very late since 2011. Uh, here in Berlin, we've been first investors in N26, in, in WeFox, Billy, FinCompare, Frogster. Uh, all of them are speaking today or tomorrow and are well underway. Uh, but we've also been backing great founders uh, from day one in other places of uh, Europe. Just yesterday, there was the announcement that EasyCo, uh, the leading Turkish payment gateway, exited to pay you NASPERS. Uh, really great outcome for Barbaros and Tassin, who are actually Germans, second generation Turks who went back to Turkey to start this fantastic business uh, seven years ago. So uh, great uh, outcome for them. Um, in UK, I would highlight uh, Tide uh, and Curve. In uh, France, I would highlight Lemonway, Predictus, and, and um, in the Nordics, uh, Grand Hood, very exciting private pension play. Uh, or in Holland factories, just to name a few. So the big question, uh, of course, is, uh, is fintech a hype? Is fintech a bubble? There's obviously been unbelievable amounts of capital flowing into fintech globally, um, primarily US and China, less so in Europe, but in the last 24 months, we've seen a huge acceleration of also US and Asian capital flowing into places like Berlin and London. And of course, we like that, that's fantastic. Um, we've had companies um, pass beyond the 20 billion valuation and market cap, such as Stripe or Wirecard or um, Square, and there's many to follow. So, so that's all great. However, if you really look at the details, this has been fairly concentrated in uh, a few areas within this broad sector of fintech. Um, the numbers indicate the uh, percentage of fintechs in the respective areas, and you can see that uh, especially in retail payment and commercial payments, there's been most of the uh, startups, clearly because um, a lot of the uh, incumbents have m completely missed e-commerce and e-commerce payments and the checkout in general. And that's exactly where some of the biggest fintechs have been established. Um, what is also interesting, though, is if you look at the colors, the dark red colors indicate um, the size of banking, current banking revenues. 
so the importance of revenues for a bank. And so if you look at, for instance, capital markets with large corporates, that's pretty much still untouched by the, the young guys. And, and uh, uh, so they've been able to defend that. However, if you look at um, retail lending and investments, that's a very important revenue pool for established players that is being uh, challenged greatly, especially in countries like US and China, and to a lesser extent in Europe. So it's a bit of a mixed, uh, mixed picture here, um, fintechs versus, versus banks. Another statistic you don't see here, which I found interesting, is you don't see too much switching behavior yet, right? So people who already use uh, their established uh, bank or insurance company, there is fairly little switching. However, if you look at new accounts, that's where the fintechs are really taking over. A few examples from our portfolio. Tide, for instance, in the UK, business bank, allows you to open a, a bank account within five minutes. Uh, beautiful UX. Um, they have now, uh, they are um, uh, acquiring more than 10% of all new business accounts in the UK. If you add um, N26, Revolut, and Monzo in Europe, by my best guess, they have between 25 and 30,000 new accounts per day, fully KYC'd. Um, not sure what percentage that is of new accounts, but it is a very, very significant amount, and you roll that forward a few years, uh, that will obviously have a big impact. Or one here in uh, Germany, the carrier of WeFox, uh, they launched last year a household and liability, and within a few months, they were by far the number one in new policies in the German market, far ahead of Allianz and everyone else. So obviously, fintech is becoming more relevant. I, uh, we would argue that uh, we are really only at the beginning. So far, most fintechs and insurtechs have been uh, really working on top of the existing infrastructure and um, focusing on really uh, customer usability on good customer experience. They've obviously been able to accelerate product development by their agile techniques. And they've obviously also simplified the whole onboarding process. So that's all great, but we're moving into the next phase and it's already started. The next phase, obviously, uh, core banking has moved or is moving into the cloud. The regulator, even in very strict jurisdictions like Germany, has accepted that. Um, uh, that, is, that is happening. Obviously, the regulator with PST2 in Europe has put the data or is trying to put the data back in the hands of consumers and businesses. This, of course, doesn't happen from one day to the other, but it is happening. And so it's just so much easier for consumers and businesses to tap into financial services whenever they need it, wherever they need it, and turn them on and off. And there are a few players um, on the uh, lower right-hand side that many of you are familiar with that are enabling this shift. They are enabling this Plaid from the US, uh, just launched in Europe, uh, but uh, in Europe, uh, TrueLayer and Tink. Th these guys enable consumers and businesses to leverage their data for services and for a seamless experience. You could also add uh, players like Marketa or also Wirecard on the card issuing side. Um, or Solaris and Mambu on the bank account side. Um, I mean, obviously, we're going through big changes, and we believe fintechs are the ones that will be, uh, uh, you know, adapting to the new situation. I mean, the way we work, the way we live, the way we save, the way we own is dr drastically changing, and uh, the agility of fintechs, uh, uh, the access to data, and of course, making use of that data uh, puts them in a great position to take advantage of this uh, new world. And um, it's obviously for the gig economy, uh, there's de very different requirements for financial services. If you just think of temporary workers, um, sh short term need for cash flow, um, uh, or also covering risk only for a specific period of time. So, for us, really, um, uh, even though you can wonder sometimes about lofty valuations these days, uh, we think um, fintech is everywhere. Um, uh, it will drive pretty much every 
ecosystem, every uh, ecosystem out there, digital ecosystem, and um, will uh, allow easy accessible financial services, real time, fully personalized, and most importantly, fully compliant with banking regulation and with um, data privacy and data protection. So yeah, we're excited. Uh, and uh, you know, if you're bu uh, building something cool out there and you want to talk to us, please reach out. Thanks a lot.